play that was expected to close in four days ended up running for eight show-stopping years. It ultimately became the longest-running show in Broadway history, passing Fiddler on the Roof. I think the music is very catchy. The score is great. The arrangements are great. It's exciting. It's colorful. Jeff Conaway played leader of the pack Danny Zuko from 72 to 74. The play was a rite of passage for many future Hollywood stars, including Richard Gere, Peter Gallagher, and John Travolta. John Travolta auditioned for Grease the first time. He was 16 or something, and uh, he didn't make it. He popped up then a year later to audition for the show. That was the first national tour. I was off Broadway at the Eden Theater in New York, and it was like my favorite show. Right. And I, uh, I desperately wanted to be in it. We decided we wanted to have John as the, in the role of duty. Soon, Grease ignited interest from Hollywood producers. Jim Jacobs fielded dozens of proposals ranging from banal to bizarre. And they wanted to do it as a full-length animated feature. They said that at the end, Danny Zuko commits suicide. Don't make me laugh. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> so, we were warning, and I went, yeah, well, maybe. And we walk out of the room, holy cow, man, what is that? For years, no one was able to harness the spirit of the play. Most of Hollywood believed that musicals were a thing of the past. And by the mid-70s, the play's loyalists were convinced that it would never hit the silver screen. Well, maybe if you believe in miracles, Prince Charming will show up again someday. Somewhere unexpected. See you later. Next, the play's authors are cast off the movie set. They made damn sure that Warren and I were cut out, uh, which really hurt. And later, a low-budget bet pays off in a box office bonanza. It's the kind of map that in 2001 would make a studio executive cry. When Behind the Music continues. It's a technicolor tune moviegoers and record buyers still can't get out of their heads. A song and a scene that have become camp classics. But back in the mid-70s, it seemed that no one in Hollywood wanted Grease badly enough to see it made into a film. See a penny, pick it up all day long, you'll have good luck! The motion picture rights to Grease have been sold a number of times, three or four times over the years. Now, nobody ever thought it was going to be made into a movie. Everyone had given up. Relax. I think our luck is changing. Then in 1975, film producer Alan Carr decided that Grease had the grit to make Hollywood musicals shine again. Alan Carr, who was an extraordinary lover of show business, believed that there was a movie there and believed that it would be a movie that would reopen the doors to musicals in Hollywood. Carr teamed up with Australian entrepreneur Robert Stigwood. Together, they purchased the movie rights to Greece for $200,000 and began looking for a charismatic lead. The performer who caught their eye was a veteran of Greece who'd since moved from the stage to television. In 1977, John Travolta was a TV sensation, starring as the dashing but dense Vinnie Barbarino on Welcome Back, Cotter. Robert Stigwood saw Welcome Back, Cotter, and he saw Travolta, and he said, that guy's going to be a star. Stigwood and Carr signed Travolta to a three-picture million-dollar deal with Paramount. They immediately cast him in their disco flick Saturday Night Fever and in Greece as Danny Zuko. In those days, they didn't think that TV artists could uh, cross over to film. Everyone declared me mad. The producer's gamble on Travolta left little room for error. Their entire budget was just $6 million, all that Paramount was willing to risk on a musical after recent film flops like Hello, Dolly! and Godspell. I think they thought Grease was a real uh, long shot, uh, which is why the budget was enormously low. It was a gamble for, from Paramount's part, absolutely a gamble. Hoping to broaden the film's appeal, Alan Carr and screenwriter Bronte Woodard changed the story's setting from windy Chicago to sunny Los Angeles and toned down the stage version Sex and Violence. <laughs> You're cruising for a bruising. With plastic combs replacing pocket knives, the play's authors worried the movie was about to become a campy catastrophe. <laughs> Guys, be cool, huh? Warren and I were sitting there cringing. Just going, oh my 
uh, guys I grew up with would never do that. You know, <laughs> they would have beat these guys up in an instant, you know. Warren Casey and Jim Jacobs were unhappy with the direction the film was taking and soon found themselves unwelcome on the set. A series of events occurred, scandalous Hollywood events. Jim was not given a position um, of any kind of supervisory position over the music on the film. All of a sudden, one day I pull up, I say, oh, sorry, you're not on the list. So I was like, you know, banned from, uh, from going in there. So I was not at all a part of the uh, making of the motion picture. They made damn sure that Warren and I were cut out, which really hurt. I mean, this was our baby. Determined to give Grease a makeover, Carr and Stigwood pushed the play's creators out of the picture pairing veteran choreographer Pat Birch with director Randall Kleiser. We all trusted each other. It was an unlikely team in some ways, but a wonderful team. A wonderful team. John Travolta had been cast in the lead role as Danny Zuko. Broadway headliner Jeff Conaway won the part of his best friend, Kanicki. <laughs> uh, well, listen, I'll pick you up at three, huh? But the producers were lost for a female lead to play Danny's love interest, Sandy. Why don't you take out a missing persons ad? Uh, uh, try the yellow pages, I don't know. Until a chance meeting in early 1977. I was at a dinner party at Helen Reddy's house, and uh, Alan Carr, who was the producer, was sitting opposite me at the table. Australian pop star Olivia Newton-John was burning up the charts with I Honestly Love You. Now Alan Carr wanted to see if she could bring heat to a movie screen. My musical career was doing very well at the time, so I asked if I could do a screen test so I could see if I thought I could do this role. What's the matter? Are you afraid? No, I'm not. And so John and I did a screen test and it really worked well, thank goodness, and uh, I made the film. Sandy, um, would you want Marie? Danny, I don't know what to say. Say yes. Yes. Oh. And John really wanted her. John thought she would be just terrific. Well, I love the pairing because, you see, uh, although Olivia was probably a bigger star at the time, I was evolving in my own... I was becoming the my own version of uh, the male side of whatever Olivia was creating. So together it was like, you know... Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. it was, uh, I thought he was cute. With the leads providing instant electricity, the producers recruited a supporting cast to round out the good vibes of Greece. Yeah, the guys really go for it, and that's how I got my nickname, Frenchie. Sure it is. <laughs> oh. When I walked in, they just started laughing, and I thought, this is either good or bad. <laughs> I read for them, and, and then I said, well, you know, do you think I could uh, read for Rizzo? <laughs> They said, no, <laughs> we think you're just fine for friendship. Woody, how do I look? Like a beautiful blonde pineapple. None of us had to go very far, had to dig way down deep into who we were to be these characters. We were so much like everybody else. I think that's what makes people relate to us. Parker! In the summer of 77, shooting finally began on Greece, the movie. And the cast and crew were in high spirits. We called each other by our characters, and we stayed in character, and it was wonderful because they gave us the license to be as goofy, as crazy, as horny, you know, whatever. <laughs> We were all bouncing around, acting like a bunch of crazy kids, and Randall Kleiser said, okay, come on, settle down now, settle down, we're getting ready to shoot. And we said, we can't settle down, this is who we are, this is who the characters are. And when the cameras stopped rolling, the party continued. Next, Frenchie is floored by a dreamy teen idol. I mean, I, I'm drooling now, man. I mean, it was no acting. The guy is really awesome. And later, Grease glides into movie history. I turned on the radio, and on every station, there were songs from the movie playing, and I, I thought, wow. When Behind the Music continues.